Uh, hey everyone, welcome to my five minute talk on how to learn Python. Sorry for the trickery. My name is Daniel Moniz. I work at Points, perhaps unfortunately. Uh, I've been there for, uh, for over a year as a software engineer. Okay. Um, everyone here is part of the Python community in some sense or other. Um, this is a community event, after all. Uh, while I don't necessarily feel that we have a duty to aggressively spread Python to every edge of the globe. Oh, this is, sorry guys. Can you still hear me okay? Cool. Um, I, I do feel that for people who want to get into the Python community, who want to learn, we do have an obligation to help them out as best we can. And there aren't a lot of talks about how to learn Python. So, so that's uh, the goal here is to help beginners learn and ultimately get a job working in Python. Okay, so my story, the quick version, over a year and a half ago, I quit my previous job without having anything lined up. Um, we weren't using source control, and we were using PHP. Okay, and so, so that was that. I wanted to learn something totally new, and I left. I, the plan was to spend two to three months learning Python and then get an awesome job. I created and followed a system to do so, and indeed, within three months, I was able to get a job at points on my Python and Django skills. So I want to share with you how I did that. Uh, my role at points in the last few months has been, yes, to develop software, of course, but also to actually just share Python knowledge. I was moved to Teams in order to raise the skill of Python knowledge on that team. So the things I've been doing, tons of code reviews, tons of pair programming. So I have performed hundreds of code reviews, uh, given brutal feedback in the last few months, uh, uh, and, and learned a lot about how Java developers try to learn Python and the things they run into. Okay, so uh, the system that I'm about to present, it is repeatable. Okay, I believe that anybody can do it. And it yields results, the reason being because it follows some principles that employers are actually looking for. Okay, it's called a three-day project paradigm. All you need is a project idea. So you can feel free to ask a more experienced developer to get something that you can accomplish within two to three days. Okay, I did a web crawler, which is an idea a friend gave me. I, he told me to pick a site I liked, so I scraped a Lord of the Rings wiki, got it local, and made, uh, remapped all the URLs so it would work locally and not on the internet. Simple enough. Day one. Day one, you simply mess around. You jump in, make mistakes, learn about the language. So this was literally the first thing I'd ever done with Python. And so there was, you, you assume you're going to refactor everything you do. You just mess around. Okay, day two is supposed to be the complete func functionality of your application. So this is really a very small application. If it's growing too big, you cut scope. You refactor as you need to because you want your code to be pretty for reasons we'll see soon. You eliminate bugs. You're supposed to be bug free, bug free by the end of day two. Um, and the reason is because on day three, we're not doing much coding at all. We're completing documentation. We're refactoring again and pushing to an online repo dealing with packaging, et cetera. Anything you need to do to complete the project because day four, you're done. You never touch the project again. So with that goal in mind, we're trying to complete something completely self-sustaining that we never touch, that we have, so we have something to show for our hard work, okay? And this not only feels good, but you literally can show employers, okay? This is something you can put on your resume and it's something I did and it helped me to actually get a job. So uh, some other, other tools and tips. Phone interviews are absolutely ruthless and terrifying. Okay, so um, I did a whole bunch of these and got a lot of experience doing them. Uh, I found a site called coderbyte.com. I'm not associated with it in any way. And uh, they give you 15 minute Python problems that you can, you can solve, they're timed. Uh, there's other languages as well. And the idea is to sweat it out on your own before you actually get to an interview. So this helped me immensely uh, doing, doing phone interviews, especially where you have to code in a Google Doc and you can't run it, you can't test it, or something like that. Okay, Stack Overflow, use it. Um, obviously, it's an incredible resource. Everyone here knows that. But tell your friends if they're trying to get into Python. Ask questions. As soon as they're, uh, you or they are comfortable, answer questions. And read answers about, specifically, decorators. Generators. There's beautiful, like long essay answers about these that really get into the details of Python, okay, and start to get a better feel for how it works. Some common stumbling blocks, especially for Java developers. Here's two of them. Everything is an object, and people have a really hard time understanding that. 
So if someone can understand that an integer, a file, and a function are all objects, they can get a much better feel for how to manipulate things and see that this stuff isn't actually magic. It's as simple as working with objects. Okay? The other one, learn to refactor and refactor to learn. So if you're not refactoring your Python code, you're not learning how to write good Python code. So don't take code review comments personally. That wasn't, that wasn't supposed to happen, but that did mean it was fun. Cool. One last thing. Uh, so I present a challenge to beginners. Okay? If you're not sure what skill level you're actually at, Use the Python mock library to write pure unit tests on your whole code base, especially if it's a web application. If you're able to do this and, and mock out old dependencies, uh, you have a pretty darn good understanding for how the Python interpreter is working. You're no longer a beginner Python programmer. That's all I have time for. Thank you very much. Dan can, Dan can take a couple of questions while the next speaker is getting set up. Anyone? Anyone? Anybody have a similar experience with a, with a short-term learning blitz? Well, I was just going to say you're talking about supporting people. I think you should include in there having someone do a code review of the final project to recommend to you how you could be more efficiently using language features. Sure, a absolutely. That's not always, um, not always an option for people who don't have uh, resources or don't have someone to give them the time because code reviews are time intensive. But yes, definitely that, that is something that helps. Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. You guys can find me after. Feel free to ask any questions. Go ahead. So, that, that sounds like something that would be good if you have a friend who's mentoring you with the 15 minute problems because that will be a small enough thing that if someone is voluntarily helping you they can look over what you have there and provide feedback on a small amount of code as opposed to a large project that you've the pushed out. Bytes you, site that the coder bytes. Referencing. Oh, sure, yeah. I mean, the, the, it, does, it does evaluate your code. So it's less for code. Uh, uh, it's more for code correctness than for beauty of code. And it's more because in an interview, they don't really care how pretty it is. They want you to be able to hack out an algorithm in 15 minutes. Yeah. Are you ready to roll? Okay, so let's uh, thank Dan again. Thank you very much.